Hello crafty friends, welcome to this everyday inspiration video in which I make a card inspired by the tiles in the kitchen of a holiday home that I recently stayed in. As soon as I saw the tiles I fell in love with the colours, the pattern and the uneven edges so I thought I'd use them to inspire a clean and simple watercolour based card. The first thing I'm going to do is use this tile pattern, square pattern stencil to draw a grid on my card panel here. This is mixed media paper. You can use any paper or card that will handle watercolour well. So something like mixed media paper, watercolour paper, or Bristol smooth cardstock, something like that. I popped it on a grip mat just to keep everything still and I've lined up my stencil so my tiles are running horizontally and vertically. And I'm lightly drawing around the inside, of the holes in the stencil to get that tile pattern transferred onto my card. I'm not going to have the whole thing covered. I'm going to have some partial tiles. I'm going to take this off the grip mat because I want to be able to manoeuvre it. I like to be able to swivel my paper when I'm watercolouring. And for my colours, I've chosen a warm grey a brown, an olivey green and a yellow ochre. I'm going to start with the olive green, add a bit of water, pick up some colour, pop it on my mat and add water until I get the consistency of paint I want. And I'm going to add that in a diagonal across my tile pattern. I've got some paper here, paper towel, and I can lift off a bit of colour, dry my brush and do it again because what I want is not for blooms and blotches to form, I want an even layer of water over each tile so I can pick up excess paint and water by doing that. By tilting it up, I make the water and paint run down to the bottom of each tile and I can see where it pulls if there is a little bit that needs picking up. The tiles that inspired this pattern had a really wobbly edge to them. They weren't perfectly square. So I'm not attempting to get a perfectly square tile. I want them to have that wobbly edge look. So that's all the olive green I'm going to use. And I'll do another one and I think I'm going to go for the brown underneath. Tilt that up again and pick up with a dry brush any pools of colour so I get a nice even level of moisture across my tiles as they dry. Now I'm going to go for the yellow, the yellow ochre type colour. Not quite sure what this one's called. I do have a whole series on using watercolours on clean and simple cards. So if you want more watercolour detail, then do check that out. I will leave a link in the video description below. And this one here and this one here are also going to be yellow because of the way the pan repeats. Now we're filling the gaps with the grey. So I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry naturally and then I'm going to give it a good blast with my hair dryer before I try erasing the pencil lines. So there we go, I've taken the pencil lines off and I've got a nice wibbly wobbly tiled pattern. And there are some little bits of pencil line showing but they just create a kind of shadow or depth and dimension which I like. For my focal image I've got this leafy branch and I'm going to cut it from mixed media paper. 
because I want to use watercolour on it, I'm going to colour it with watercolour. So there we've got my mixed media piece. I'm going to colour the twiggy bits in brown, the same brown I use for the tiles, but less watered down, so it's more saturated, a stronger colour. And I'm going to do the leaves in the olivey green again, not water it down so much. I'm not waiting for the brown to dry before I add the white because I kind of want the two colours to blend into each other rather than be completely separate. So some of the green will go down the twiggy bits and some of the brown from the twigs will go up into the leaves. And I can go in and drop in a little bit more colour here or there where I feel it needs darkening up. I'll give that a minute or two to soak in and then I'll blast it with my hair dryer. So that's more or less dry now. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of green, more of this olive green to the leaves just to create an illusion of shape and depth. So I'm thinking that's going to sit on there like that. And although I've used the same paints, the same colours for the background and the foreground, because I've used different saturations, the background was much more watered down than the foreground, the leaves stand out nicely. I'm going to use my embossing tool and this piece of craft foam to curl the leaves a bit. So if I rub them on the back, they will curl backwards. If you rub them on the front, they'll curl forwards, as it were. So we're doing this on the back so they curl backwards. Makes them look a bit more leafy. So I think I want to add a little bit more texture behind my leafy thing. So I've got here a rough texture stamp. I'll stick that on my acrylic block and I'll get a little bit of watercolour and just paint it over. Not the whole thing because I don't want it to be too big. Just paint it over like that and then stamp it on here i'll we'll dry that with my hairdryer and i'll pop some glue on the back of there just the stems not the leaves i'm going to place that there and just hold it down so the glue's got a chance to stick for my sentiment i've got this thankful for you stamp in an old typewriter font I'm going to stamp it on some mixed media paper so it's the same as this and I've used black ink to help it stand out a bit and I'm going to die cut it with this stitched rectangle die. Right, I've mounted my card panel onto a card blank and I'm going to add my sentiment but before I do I want to double up on this end the thickness of the card because this end is going to go over the leaves and branches and I want the sentiment to be level. Now I'm going to put this about here roughly central in this direction but so I've still got some leaves peeking out from the top and the bottom. Just to add a little bit of shimmer and shine I'm going to take this rose gold metallic paint and do a little bit of spattering. The only thing I don't really want spatters on is the sentiment and I want to restrain the spatters to this area. So I'll mask this off and just add a few here and there. And I think the leaves need a bit of gloss on them. So I'm going to go over each leaf with crystal glaze, not the stems, just the leaves. So I put a blob in the middle and then use the nozzle to drag it to the edges. That way I should be able to keep it on the leaves and not flood everywhere with crystal glaze. And that's this card finished. I hope you like it and that it's encouraged you to take inspiration from things in your surroundings that catch your eye. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a thumbs up, sharing your thoughts in the comments and adding me to your subscriptions. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.